in San Diego and I was kind of getting bored. There wasn't much of a scene there and there wasn't too much going on for me to do when I wasn't working. So I knew that I was getting restless and I, I had to, to kind of get back to, to a scene where things were really happening. So I made the decision to move back to New York and I started making the phone calls about it to Anthony or whoever else I knew back here and trying to see what the scene was. Right when I was about to move back to New York, um, I got a call from a friend of mine who actually books Akiko Yana, who I'd been working with, who also worked with a, a Japanese artist named Hikaru Utada, who's a really popular singer over there. Um, and she had, I think, five nights at Budokan or something, and, and they needed somebody to come in at the last minute and do it. So right before I was going to move back to New York, like literally two, three weeks before, um, they called. I went over there last minute, did that. Moving back to New York, I started sort of investigating what was going on here and trying to see what I wanted to do and started going to Wayne Kranz's gig a lot. Anthony had been playing with Wayne and Ari Honig had been playing with Wayne. So Anthony sort of threw my name in the hat and we started playing together and uh, from that point on I just started playing with Wayne a lot around town and, and anybody else in town that was, uh, that was working that would, that would call. Um, so around about I think 2005 uh, I got a call, another last minute call from a, a band in Japan called Kuruli that uh, was up in Boston doing a recording. And I don't know what happened, but they needed a drama really fast. So I went up to Boston and played on their record. And I was still subbing gigs with Michelle in, in the meantime and doing Wayne's thing. Played on their record and they liked it and, and ended up, long story short, hiring me to do their tour for the next six or eight months in Japan. I came back here. Um, did another tour with them in 2006 for most of the summer uh, and then I went and I did another tour with Akiko Yano that year and Anthony and stuff with Wayne and Michelle and it was all just kind of getting mixed together. I mean I've been really lucky in that I've been called to do a lot of different styles and a lot of different things and I've had to sort of develop the coping mechanisms of jumping from gig to gig and trying to sound as authentic as I possibly can. For me, the Latin thing is like, I mean, being you know, a white guy from San Diego, um, I've been a huge fan of that music my whole life, but I'm not a traditional Latin player. I never sat down and learned specific things other than, you know, cascara and clave and all that. And I've been really lucky to, to get on records with guys like, you know, Giovanni Hildago or any of these other guys that, that would teach me whatever I could. I just by accident ended up some, on some gigs with Tito Puente, with Michelle, and just legends of the music and I would always ask them and they were always really nice to me and showed me everything and, and would tell me that's, that's right or that's wrong. And same thing with uh, when I was playing with Manhattan Transfer, I mean we'd be on the bill with some of my heroes, you know, swing players and you know, Jimmy Cobb and all these people and I would see all of them and you know I'd ask questions and I would constantly be uh, you know just soaking up anything I could and that really kind of got me over and so being able to switch from very syncopated you know intricate Latin stuff or quiet swing stuff to, to backbeat stuff is something it's a, it's a challenge but I really enjoy all those styles of music so over the years I've tried to sort of develop these different areas of my mind to where if I flip to that style it's kind of like a switch and I try to I have a set of circumstances that I use or or little tricks that I use to try to get inside that. And it's, it's not perfect, but you know, I'm trying. <laughs> or 20 years old and I had just started doing Michelle's gig um, one day my phone rang and it was Vic Fur himself and now this is the stick you know since I was a little kid this is like it's just I remember it very specifically it was one big day for me and, and Vic actually called me I actually got to speak to Vic and I remember thinking like man you know I've made it <laughs> you know not only are they the best sticks and, and you know the company's great and everybody's really nice and 
you know, they, uh, it's just always been my favorite product, um, and and they've been, uh, you know, for 20 years I've been with them now, and, and they've been nothing but supportive, and they're really, really kind, and and this, obviously the product is great. So, um, you know, I'm really happy to be with them. I'm happy to be with them. Just recently, I started playing a bunch of gigs with Michelle again. I haven't actually done anything consistent with him other than subbing for maybe four or five years now. But and other than that, I'm playing. Uh, I'm actually playing tonight with Wayne Kranz um, at the 55 Bar, and I play sometimes with a band in town called uh, Drive By Leslie, which Carlock does that too. Actually, I have a studio in California, and I go back and forth and do stuff there sometimes. Um, periodical gigs in California with Dean Brown, guitar player. Yeah, I've got um, some lessons on my website. They're downloads that I've been doing now for two, three years, and they've been uh, they've become relatively popular. So if you want to see them, you can check them out at my site is uh, cliffalmondrums.com. I'm on MySpace, Cliff Allman Music, Facebook, all the all the normal places. So come by and check it out. Yeah.